Hey there, thank you for joining us today. By way of a quick introduction, my name is Ronnie, General Manager here at Campus Press, and we are a WordPress host and services provider. We've been around since 2005. Our, our first service was the EduBlogs platform, which is still growing strong today with millions of blogs for teachers and students. And we're also part of the same company behind WPMU Dev, which has a ton of popular plugins like Smush Image Optimization Service, and we provide different tools and services geared towards agencies and freelancers. We're a learning company first, which is really important to us. And by that, I mean that our founder, James, was a university lecturer. I've taught and worked in both K-12 and higher ed, and many on our team have worked in and around different educational organizations as well. And so for our session today, we wanted to introduce you to several members of our team to give you a behind the scenes look at what we do and give a little insight into our latest services, including a new tool that I'll demo at the end here, which I think many of you will find interesting for sure. So let's, uh, let's get started and bring in the team. Hey everyone, good to see you. Hi. Hi. Ryan. Hi. So let's start by a uh, quick introduction. Just go around and tell us uh, who you are and what you do. I'm Christine. I am located in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and I'm a sales director for the higher ed clients with Campus Press. Hi, I'm Shaveen. I'm based in Kingston, Jamaica, and I'm a support developer for Campus Press. Hi, I'm Jason. I'm based in Austin, Texas, and I'm an account manager for Campus Press. And I'm glad you could all join us. And uh, the way this is going to work today is we asked a lot of our customers and community at large for some questions. We got a few back. We added a few based on the things that, that we know people have asked us in the past. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just going to ask the questions, throw them out there, and uh, we'll just have a little conversation around it. So uh, the first question here, the title of the session is More Than a Host. That uh, you know, Campus Press historically we may have been known as a, a WordPress host, but we do a little bit more than that. And so, Christine, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about you know what are some of the newer services that Campus Press now offers. Yeah, sure. So a lot of our clients, especially in these times, they don't have the time on their hands to do a lot of the manual work. So uh, we have four new services that we provide. Um, the first one is content migrations. So if you're move, trying to move sites from other proprietary CMSs or platforms, um, like Drupal or static HTML sites, move them into WordPress, we can help with that process for you. Um, there's plugins out there that would help migrate the sites, and then sometimes there it requires some uh, manual work to fix up. So our support team is there to help, you know, manually move pages or um, you know help use those tools for you. We also do site rebuilds. So if you have a design or a example site that you would like to move your site to, we can rebuild that. Um, if you're using a page builder that you want to move away from and you need to use something like Gutenberg, our team will help with that manual process. Um, we just were wrapping up a very large project with one of our clients with um, over 500 sites that were using a specific page builder. So um, they're moving into Gutenberg and we're helping with that. Another one is content updates. So uh, if your team would like us to make any updates to the content, staff directories, um, image galleries, urgent notifications. Our team is there to um, help with those updates. All you have to do is send our team an email with the updated content that you need, and we can make the update for you without the users logging into the network. And then lastly, we do single site hosting. So if you have any types of sites that may just need a single WordPress install, we can, um, you know, set that up and help host that for you. Nice. Uh, and so from that, one of our, our, our original service, if you will, one of the things that we've been known for and taken a lot of pride in has been our support. And Jason, I know you've been with us for a while on the support team being a big part of that. So I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about how our support has changed over the years. Sure, so yeah, I've been part of the EduBlogs and now the Campus Press support team for about five, maybe going on six years. 
And really, when it gets to the basic core of support, nothing much has changed. You know, our goal has always been to provide really high level and valuable support to our end users and do that as quickly as possible. So the goal and the mission hasn't really changed, uh, but the way we've done that has changed as our user base has grown and developed. Um, we used to have a, we used to have a small team based in primarily Australia and the United States, a handful of team members. Now our team is all over the globe. I think we're on every continent except Antarctica. So that's pretty cool. We have a global team now and our, our team has grown along with our customer base. So our customer base, we used to have a set of customers where the network setup was very similar. Uh, themes and the plugins they used were very similar. There were some customizations, but not as many as we see today. Uh, what we've seen in the past couple of years is what I call an explosion of customizations. So everything from authentication options to custom themes, to custom plugins, to custom block, everything is becoming uh, more individualized and more custom. So as that transition has happened with our customers, our team has changed as well. We've kind of gone from being support generalists where we all support, where we all supplied a general level of support to all of our customers, which we still do, but now we transition more to account manager roles where we work really closely with individual clients in our the time zone. So I'm here in the US, I work with a lot of US and Canada based networks. I know their site admins, I know their site settings, I know their customizations, I know those networks in and out. So uh, we transitioned a lot as our customers have uh, grown and developed. And as I said before, we just, as WordPress continues to grow and develop, as those customers grow and develop, our team grows and develops right alongside of them. Uh, another change that we've made, it's a simple change, but a big change, is we started to incorporate Slack into our support workflow. We used to answer all support inquiries by email, and now we have Slack channels set up for our customers. So if there are quick issues that don't warrant an entire email, or maybe there's an urgent issue that requires immediate attention, they can ping us in Slack, and we can handle that in a live chat environment versus email. Uh, one question we do get a lot, um, I know people coming from other platforms, sometimes they run into issues where they can only support, they only get a certain level of support or a certain number of uh, support tickets they can enter in any given month or any given year. So one question we get is, you know, is there a limit to the support we can provide? And I know um, Shaveen handles a lot of our support, so I'm going to let her answer that one. And so, yeah, there is definitely no level, uh, no limit to the number of support tickets that you could send in. Uh, it doesn't matter if you are a beginner with WordPress or you are an expert. We have a diverse team that's available 24-7. They'll be able to answer any questions you have. And then one of the amazing features of Campus Press is that you're actually able to send us a request right from your WordPress dashboard. So you don't have to worry about ever logging out or going anywhere else. You could just ask us a question there and feel free to send us as many support requests as you'd like. Excellent. Yep, that's what we're here for, for <laughs> sure. Uh, another question we get, Christine, is do, do you need to have developers on staff to host with WordPress? Yeah, you do not need to have developers on staff. Our developers are there to help um, as much or as little as you need. We host sites for schools from you know, 200 sites up to 90,000 or 200 students to up to 90,000 students um, mm -hmm. yeah, around the world. So. No need to have any developers. Our developers are there to help um, as needed. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, another service that we've been providing more and more is different training options that we do. And I know Jason, you've been a big part of the training as well. So I was wondering if you could speak to that. What is training with Campus Press like? Yeah, so the training sessions that we offer are very valuable. I think for both our support team and our end users, uh, the feedback that we've gotten from the end users is highly positive. Uh, so that's really good. It's also helpful for our support team because when we do these trainings, we get a little refresher course on all the network settings and customizations and things like that. So it's nice to jump back in and just uh, get reacquainted uh, get acquainted with new networks and reacquainted ones that we've been supporting for a while. Uh, the trainings themselves, we offer a couple different formats. We can do live in-person trainings, which unfortunately we haven't gotten to do much these last two years. Uh, the most popular option is our live online trainings, and then we also offer a recorded training um, as well. So basically with all the trainings, what we're doing is providing an overview uh, for the users so that when they get into the WordPress dashboards, they know where they, know where they are and they know what they're doing. So for network admins, uh, we generally look at the network level 
dashboard. We go through all the important settings, where to find them and how to use them. If there are any custom themes or plugins or tools that also have network level settings, uh, we'll explore those as well. <clears throat> For end users and individual site admins, we do basically the same thing, except we're looking at individual site dashboards versus that network level dashboard. Uh, we take them through the whole process. We show them how to add content, how to add posts, pages, media. Uh, we show them how to work with plugins and widgets. If a university or a client does have customized options like custom themes, plugins, or blocks, we show them how to use those. And again, uh, the goal of those trainings is to give them an overview so when they get into WordPress, whether they're a seasoned user or they're a brand new user, uh, they know what they're doing, they know what they're looking at, and they're able to get started with their site. Uh, the last thing that we cover in all those trainings, as Shaveen mentioned before, uh, we have a lot of support options that are built into the dashboards, so we go over all of those with all the users so that when they're working on their sites, uh, they're able to either find our support documents or contact us directly from the dashboards. Hey, well, thanks, thanks for that, Jason. Uh, we're going to change topics just a little bit to one that is one of the most important topics probably to all of us here and all of us listening, and that is accessibility. And Shaveen, I know that you have been working hard learning more about accessibility and also supporting our customers a lot with accessibility. So uh, the broad question, how does Campus Press help with accessibility? Okay, so there we approach accessibility from three different angles. The first one being our support team, the second one being our developers, and the third being our pre-made solutions. Our pre-made solutions, of course, is what I'm most excited about, so I can't wait to tell you more about that. But in terms of our support team, if your users have questions in terms of, you know, has an element that they've added to their site, is that accessible, or is their site as a whole accessible, then our support team is able to work with them through those concerns and help them to better understand, you know, what they need to do to make their site accessible. And even even point them to resources that we've created at, um, on the Campus Press team and other resources that can better help them to understand accessibility and understand how to make their site more accessible. Now, if your team has developers that they're adding functionality or adding features, then our developers can go through their code, vet that, and help them to better understand how to make their code accessible and, of course, you know, provide them with revisions and so on. Now for pre-made solutions. So we have our enterprise theme called Campus Press Flex, which is built accessible accessibility ready. So if you want to add a design to our themes or you actually want to provide templates for your students or your faculty members, then you can be rest assured that the foundation that they've been given is accessible with Campus Press Flex. Now, of course, the more you add content to your site, the more there is a risk for your site to become inaccessible. So our accessible content plugin is like an invisible hand that helps to guide your students or guide your users to better, you know, keep their site accessible. That's it. Yeah, no, very good. And I know one of the most popular questions we get all the time is, you know, what tools can I use to help with accessibility or what tools can we use to check for accessibility? So I was wondering if you have any favorites. Right. So with tools, I feel like, you know, more tools, more problems. But so if you could like limit those to the ones that work best, then of course, that's what you want to do. So a lot of the times we overlook tools like our keyboard and voiceover and JAWS. So you actually want to go through your site, use your keyboard, use voiceover, go through every single page, try to see, can I navigate my homepage? Can I go through the navigation tabs, the links, the buttons, all of those different elements using my keyboard alone? can I use voiceovers when I hear when you know when these assistive te technologies actually read my website back to me and I'm trying to use it with my voice does it work does it make sense and of course you know wave an old tool but a reliable tool one that you could actually use to you know go through your website it's very easy to use uh, you know it provides you with really great indicators in terms of what elements need to be edited what needs to be fixed and so on and then you have pre-built tools in Chrome for example Light Lighthouse which helps you to really vet you know is your site performing really well because even though some of us may not know this this the, the rate at which your website loads is really important to accessibility so yeah those are my favorite four yeah, very nice and I, I like that you mentioned that wave is an old one but a good one I'm pretty sure I was using it more than 20 years ago uh, at a university reviewing sites way back then. So that's, uh, right. yeah, makes me feel old. Um, <laughs> so speaking of accessibility, I, the next question kind of 
is very much related. And we're hearing more and more, you know, the um, classic editor still around for at least another, you know, year plus a little bit. Um, but we have lots of sites that we host using many different page builders. And the question really is, like, how are we going to transition into Gutenberg? Uh, how does Campus Press feel about Gutenberg? And, and then going beyond that, um, the, the, the promise of full site editing that, that's coming. And so, um, you know, and at, at some point, I think, I think I'm there. We're not even calling it Gutenberg anymore. It's just the WordPress editor or the WordPress block editor, you know, made up of blocks. And I mean, speaking personally, I'm its biggest fan, uh, using it a lot and very happy with it and happy with the improvements that we've seen over time. Uh, we also have many customers. Uh, I think we're up to about a dozen to main university websites or getting close to a dozen that have been completely built on with, with, uh, with Gutenberg, the block editor, and we put, built some custom blocks in, in most of those. Um, but the, you know, the feedback from those clients has been really good and, and really strong. And so I'm also confident we've seen lots of good progress. One of our former teammates that worked with us for a while, Alex, uh, he's moved to a, to a different WordPress company, but he's still working hard on the WordPress.org accessibility team, along with a lot of others. And, uh, you know, we keep really good tabs on the, the progress there and helping out when we can as well. So, you know, we're basically all in. Um, I think the benefits are we can see more and more different types of content, content that can be engaging and interactive through different blocks. Um, and just the promise of being able to change themes and not have to do this process, like Christine was talking about migrating 500 sites from another page builder, um, you, you know, that if, if, if we're all using the same editor, that uh, forward compatibility and, and all of that just makes a lot of sense. So any new sites that we create in-house or for clients uh, have been built at least for the last year and a half or more uh, on the block editor, and that's going to continue to be the case. So, so we're all in, and I'd encourage anyone that's still on the fence. I know it may not always be the most popular opinion, but um, you know, give it a try and and, and be ready. The the training, uh, you know, the barrier of having to learn something new, I, I completely understand. But our experience has been that that has not been uh, been a real problem, and so 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 we're all in. Um, so speaking of those sites and those, those redesigns and building those, those tools, um, Christine, a question we get sometimes, can we help fully redesign a site and can we help with building themes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when it comes to site redesigns, we do partner with design agencies that do specialize in the redesign process with the content strategy, information architecture, um, redoing your brand, all those types of things. Um, the two biggest ones we work with is Five Degrees Branding here in the U.S. and Smile for international clients. Um, we work with them. They provide the design, um, you know, design files, wireframes. Our team will take those designs, do the theme development, create custom blocks for the specific needs, and also um, we'll collaborate on training for those clients. Um, a lot of them are coming from other CMSs, so it's the first time they're using WordPress. So we go through and um, you know a series of different training processes um, to make sure that their users are um, familiar and comfortable with using the themes. Yeah, very nice, and it's been fun to see more and more of those those main level sites um, that that we get to work on, yeah. and just you know how unique. They all can be, and and uh, you know how important they are to the mission that that our that our clients have, which is which has been fun. Um, so the next one, I will will take and speak a little bit to. Uh, we were asked, uh, have we ever had any security incidents that that we can tell you about? And so, you know, uh, I don't know if you can hear me. I'm knocking on my wood desk. Uh, we have not had any major security incidents, and the 11 plus years that I've been with Campus Press or in, 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 uh, to my knowledge ever and you know we hope to maintain that and keep it that way. There have been some some 
some smaller things that have come up that we've had to be uh, you know, involved in. And the overwhelming majority uh, of those cases revolve around different spam uh, spam sort of situation. So it was a couple of years ago, I think we were in support, uh, saw a site that was selling, if I remember right, shoes in Russian. Um, and then we found multiple sites that were selling like Reebok shoes in Russian or something like that. And then uh, started Googling like similar content and found that this clothing and shoe store um, was was all over dozens and dozens of university websites, all through multi-sites. And so, uh, of course, we went into immediate, like, uh, kind of disaster, like, prevention and security mode, like, what, what what's going on here? Pulled in everyone from our team, uh, started just to make sure that this was not some sort of breach or, or security incident through a plugin or through WordPress core or something like that. And we worked with security teams at a few uh, of our customers, and we basically determined and are 100% confident now that in all of these cases, both ones that we hosted and, and ones that we don't, uh, these were shibboleth or, or SAML or, you know, the university institution SSO logins for students or in some cases maybe alumni that were probably purchased on the dark web somewhere and these spammers got a hold of and they found WordPress multi-sites, authenticated, created sites, and were going to town creating these like link farms. Um, so we worked with our customers. We also reached out to the ones that we found that, that, that weren't our customers to help kind of you know, alert them to the situation, help clean it up. Uh, that's There's lots of this content spam stuff out there, which is a reminder, you know, why we have two-factor authentication, why, uh, you know, why we can have different monitoring tools in place. The good news is that that's relatively benign, you know, selling shoes uh, in a foreign language on your university site. It could be a lot worse, I suppose. Um, and we've never seen anything really more significant or worse than that that I can remember. Um, but that, you know, wasn't technically a security breach from like the WordPress side, plugin side. It was a user uh, credentials problem, which is the most common thing that, that we'll see. And something we all just really have to work to, to stay on top of. Um, we are constantly, daily, hourly dealing with DDoS attacks and bot attacks and bot traffic. N nothing, uh, you know, we have monitoring and, and alarms and systems in place to know if anything ever gets in, but they're almost all uh, credential stuffing, checking to see if logins work. Um, and sometimes they cause uh, some performance issues. 99.9% .9 they don't. Um, that is an ongoing and big problem for all hosts and all sites. University and school sites are, are common targets. Um, so that's just a factor, but that's not really a security breach. That's just kind of the, the world that we live in. So uh, it's an interesting question. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's really that. I think, uh, I think our last question is also kind of an interesting question. Um, is the question was, what is the strangest or most interesting site that we host. I'm not going to call any sites that we host strange, right? Um, but uh, it, one that I can think of, Sue, that's on our team. So if you're one of our customers, you've more than likely interacted with Sue because she works like 22 hours a day, it seems. Um, but she was a fish farmer in her previous career, uh, which to me just is an interesting like fish farming to uh, being our head of support. But uh, she's phenomenal. But she also came across a uh, some fish farming sites that we host from that are part of different universities, which she got a huge kick out of. So that's one I was thinking of. I don't know if any of you have have any others. Yeah, Jason. Yeah. So as you said, I won't I won't call it strange, but uh, <laughs> one unique site I found while preparing for a training a couple of years ago uh, was called We Rate Squirrels. And this was an entire website dedicated to, um, you know, creating a rating system for all the squirrels that lived on a particular campus. So that was by far the most unique site um, I found. And then as far as 
interesting sites. Uh, I guess it was last year, early in the pandemic, one of our university clients got together a handful of famous pop R&B rock artists, and they did a private live private live stream concert uh, for the university. So uh, being a big music fan myself, I found that that's at least the coolest use of one of our sites that I've seen. So I'll give that my vote for uh, most interesting. Nice. Yeah. And you know, that I, I remember that early on in the pandemic and I think it is important to kind of speak to, um, you know, it's been, uh, you know, almost a year and a half, I guess, March, April of 2020 uh, when things were moving virtual, there was a lot of uncertainty there still is, but, um, you know, in my 11 years, by far that time period when uh, dozens and dozens of our customers were spinning up new, really important sites for their communities within a matter of hours, they were able to just go to their WordPress multi-site and, you know, they are maybe already had a theme in place that was branded and they could create a specific page uh, or, or pages or sites dedicated to communicating with their community, uh, you know, from dashboards to all of the information they needed to get out to faculty and students about what was going on with their courses through all this big change. And, uh, you know, we were able to help support that. And that was really important to us. And, and, and I know that our team really, um, you know, was very happy to be able to, to be there and, and to make that happen. You know, our, our usage went up, our hosting bills with Amazon went up like five to ten times at some points uh, of where they usually are. Uh, we know that these, you know, the services were getting a lot of use and, um, you know, it was great that there was a, uh, a platform available to, to be able to create these sites uh, because I know, generally speaking, um, you know, in a, in a university setting, especially there might be some bureaucracy involved in setting up a new site. There might be some, you know, committee meetings that need to happen or processes, but in this case, there wasn't much time for that. And so, um, we were able to be there and, and help make that happen. So, you know, I think that's a, a good, hopefully uplifting note to end on, uh, this portion. So thank you all for your time. I'm going to switch to a, to a quick demo of, of, of our new exciting tool, which I'm pretty happy, happy for, uh, but I'll see you all uh, in Slack shortly. All right. Bye. Thanks, Ronnie. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. All right. Well, let's take a look at this new service from Campus Press. Uh, one of the things that's most exciting about this to us is this is really the first time we've ever made something available to sites that we do not host. And so we think that's pretty cool and we think a lot of our existing customers and hopefully some new potential customers might find interesting too. So let's dig into the demo. Alright, well what we have is a hub manager. And basically it allows you to show all of the sites, all different WordPress installs, all in one place, and then let you manage them there. And so you can see we have sites that we host, sites that we don't host, all in one place. You can pull in sites from different departments or you know, uh, all sorts of different WordPress installs. But maybe one of the problems that you have is that you can't really keep tags, tabs on, you know, making sure plugins are up to date or WordPress core is up to date. You maybe aren't sure how much use those sites are getting. You maybe can't ensure that the backup systems that are in place are all there. So those are all the sorts of problems that really this new Hub Manager tool can help you provide. And so, you know, taking a look here, I have a list of sites. To add a new site here, you add a plugin to the site, and that connects it up, which it allows us to, to do all of the different things that, that we need to be able to do. Um, from here, you can see sites that have updates. These can be WordPress core updates or different plugin updates and theme updates. You can make those updates right from here, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, you can also see if backups are enabled through our backup system. So even if uh, a host that you have has backups in place, it's uh, a good idea, especially more and more and with, with more important sites to have a secondary backup system in place. So this can serve to do that. 
you can choose to store it with us in Amazon S3 or uh, Google Drive or Dropbox, a whole host of options, um, which can be a valuable service. You can also monitor the sites for uptime and have email addresses, uh, get alerts should sites go down. And we have uh, some stat tracking tools in there as well. So for the stats, for example, if I open up site, you can see uh, the stats right in the dashboard, pulling it in, um, similar to what you would see in Google Analytics, but without all of the hassle of dealing with shared Google accounts or oftentimes, you know, who set up the original Google Analytics is no longer working uh, in a department or there's no good way sometimes to share that, that data elsewhere, but whoever's managing and maintaining all of these sites can now see some of that traffic stats um, all in one place. We also have a plugins page, and what this does is pull all of the plugins from all of the sites that are connected in one place. So you can see that specific plugins, like our accessible content plugin, is on five different sites, which five sites it's on. You can see that it's, in this case, only activated on one site, and it's on the site but not activated and in this case these are multi-site networks so that would be not network activated on these other sites and which sites it's not on. Alright so if we go into a specific site you can see a, a, a nice overview and a bunch of different options but one of the nice tools is our automate tool and I know that automated updates are built into WordPress and you can set it to automatically update core or plugins but this tool will take it a little bit further which I wanted to show you. So I will set up manually, and you can decide how often you wanna do those checks for updates. For example, I like to actually just do all of my updates on Monday afternoon so that I know that I'll be around and can plan and kind of preview those updates instead of doing them all the time. So maybe on a weekly basis, but you can choose kind of whatever update window you'd like. Uh, you can also choose if you want to create a, a backup before that update happens automatically, which is, which is a nice feature because then should something happen, you can always roll back. And then we have a safe update checker, which will evaluate the site right before the update and right after the update and do a visual regression analysis to see if anything changed, making sure that you don't have like a white screen or that videos are loading the same way they were before or whatever it is. And you can choose up to five different pages on the site to do that check. And then you can um, decide like how much discrepancy you'll allow. You generally wanna keep this percentage pretty low so that you'll get notified should the update checker notice some changes. The reason that you can do that is maybe a site uh, is dynamic and always has some changes in content, but most of our sites you know, are, are going to be pretty much the same before and after an update. And then, uh, you know, if you'll email uh, summaries of what plugins were updated and when, you can get those reports. And then you can come in here and you can turn off what you want to auto update and what you uh, maybe want to only do manually. So in this case, I'll keep WordPress core manual, but I'll update most of my plugins. So one other thing about this hub is that it's completely brandable. You put your logo up top, your colors, uh, you can put it at your domain, you can invite teammates and users, you can decide which sites those teammates and users would have access to. So there's a lot of flexibility here in this management tool. And so this, this is actually um, also a service provided by our sister company, WPMU Dev. Um, so you can go there and access this tool and be, you know, be a member there. For our Campus Press customers, there's some additional services that we kind of put on top that we tailor towards our school and our university customers. Um, so for example, you'd have an onboarding session with your account manager and our support team, making sure that we optimize all of the settings and go through it. And WPME Dev, still a great tool. It's more for that DIY you know, opportunity. Um, we can do things like help actually through Campus Press set up and configure all of the different settings for you. Um, you know, you have more access one-on-one uh, -on -one chat through Slack channels and stuff like that for our support team. 
So there's there's some differentiators there, but both both options are definitely available and something we would be happy to talk to you about. Yeah, and uh, the other thing on the plugins page that we were talking about, I forgot to mention, you can go to add plugins and you can add plugins from wordpress.org, uh, you know, select one and then automatically add it to one or all of your sites all from here without having to log into those sites. And coming very soon, you'll be able to upload a zip file here and do the same or use something like a git, um, git link or just a URL to the file, to the plugin file. That way you can add plugins to multiple sites at once. So this, this could really come into play. I know lots of you out there may have hundreds of WordPress installs that you're managing and hopefully putting them all in one place in a tool like this would be something that'd be very helpful for you. So if this is interesting, please reach out to us, contact at campuspress.com and we'd be happy to discuss, share more and, and get you going on a, a demo or a trial basis of, of using the tool to see if it, if it would be something good for you for the long term. So. Appreciate your time and uh, let us know if we can help.